The UAE and Bahrain have given Modi the most prestigious of awards right in the midst of the Kashmir crisis. Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. <laughs> Alright guys, before we jump in to the whole politics of the whole thing, <laughs> it's Modi, you know what I mean? He's not the most gentlemanly of people. Comedy was inevitable. Regret, boredom and uncomfortable chairs pretty much summarizes this clip. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's finally dawned on him that either he's left the cooker on or that Modi is incredibly boring or that he's making a big mistake by giving this wrinkly guy a medal. Personally, I think it's the second one. I often wonder what small talk these guys make during such occasions. You are quite short okay, for an Indian. Yeah. Hey, cool wrinkles. Oh, thank you. A good job in Kashmir. Okay. You are thank very you. old person. Oh, thank you. One hand's not enough. Hold him with two, yeah? Cheers. Well, now we know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the longest handshake in the world with a random Arab guy. You win. Even the guy in the picture seems cheesed off by the crown prince. <laughs> we all know this look. Straight after letting one rip, you gotta check to see if you've gotten away with it. Have you? <laughs> Hang on a minute, why are all the serving boys black? Ass just messed up mate. Every Muslim kid knows what hand to eat and drink from. It's an elementary practice taught to us by the Prophet peace be upon him. So when the leaders can't even drink properly, how can we expect greater things from them? Now guys come on, we've all heard of the stories of Romeo and Juliet, Leila and Majnu, but nothing comes close to this. Every Eid, us ordinary folk fall victim to this age old question. What comes first, the hug or the handshake? Don't leave me. It seems no one is immune to this paradox. Alright guys, enough clowning about. Bottom line is, with everything that's been going on in Kashmir, Pakistanis are cheesed off. The Muslim Ummah in general are cheesed off at what the UAE and Bahrain are doing. But let's put things in perspective, yeah? The US will support Saudi no matter what. Whether it's in Yemen, whether it's with that whole Khashoggi thing, why? Saudi Arabia and I get along great with all of them. They buy apartments from me, they spend 40 million, 50 million. Am I supposed to dislike them? I like them very much. We protect Saudi Arabia, would you say they're rich? And I love the king, King Solomon. But I said king, we're losing our ass defending you king and you have a lot of money. And I'm not going to destroy the economy for our country by being foolish with Saudi Arabia. That's right guys, it's about money. It's the same with Pakistan. They supported China through thick and thin despite what China was doing to the Uyghur Muslims. What's your stance on China's treatment of Uyghur Muslims? Frankly, I don't know much about that. But you won't speak out against what's happening in China? If I had enough knowledge, I would speak about it. I actually, it is not so much in the papers. And now guys, the same applies to the UAE. They've got billions of dollars worth of trade with India. They've got a 
high speed train coming up and of course they've got loads of Indians in the country. So until the Muslim leaders put the Ummah in front of their money, it's going to be no change. Every country is looking out for itself but until we step out of that box and we see ourselves as an Ummah, respect ultimately comes from Allah. Look at our previous civilizations, we only did well when we held on to the rope of Allah. Until next time guys. Assalamu <coughs> 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 alaikum.